He says that the moment you accept the paycheck, your brain goes dead. You know, he just bought, he just, he just got paid. He says, as long as you're hungry, you'll think. Well, I wasn't poor by most people's standards, but I came from a family with a poor attitude, if you know what I mean. Because rich, poor, middle class, poverty starts with a fundamental attitude. So I was in Hawaii, I was nine years old. Uh, my father was the head of education, you know, PhD. Very smart man, good guy. And for some reason, we moved across town and I went to a school with rich kids. So this is a little town called Hilo, Hawaii. It's a sugar plantation town. So when I was nine years old, I moved to this rich kid's school. And suddenly I realized I was poor because it's relative. You know, as I said, it's all relative. And these guys, their fathers owned the banks, they owned the plantations, they owned the car dealerships, they owned the meat packing company, they owned the ranches. And I'm going, how come my dad doesn't own that? So I remember raising my hand when I was nine years old, talking to my ninth, my fourth grade teacher. And I said, you know, when am I going to learn about money? She says, the love of money is the root of all evil. And I said, what am I in Sunday school? That's this punky little nine-year-old kid. And she says, we don't teach money at school. I said, why not? And she couldn't answer. And she got very flustered. She said, sit down, take your seat. And then I got curious and said, why don't we learn about money? She says, go ask your father. He's the, he's my boss. My father was the head of education, PhD, all that stuff. I go home and ask him, said, why don't we learn about money in school? And he looked at me and says, because the government doesn't let us teach that subject. The government tells us what we can teach and what we can't teach. And I thought that was strange. And I said, but aren't we going to school to learn about money? He says, no, your job is to get a job. I said, but you get a job to earn money. He goes, no, you're supposed to just get a job. I went, no, 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 no. Isn't the purpose of a job to earn money? He goes, you're correct. I said, so why don't I just learn about money? I can skip the job part, you know? And he got flustered and he said, look, and my father was for Japanese, very tall, six foot four, and an imposing man, good guy. But he says, well, I'll learn about money. Why don't you ask your best friend's father about money? And I said, why? That's Mike. So I asked him. He says, because Mike's father is an entrepreneur. And I said, what, am, what are you? He says, I'm an employee. I'm a government employee. Oh, what's the difference? He says, the difference is an entrepreneur must know about money or they're, they're no longer entrepreneurs. And he says, an employee doesn't have to know anything about money because the government will take care of them, the company will take care of them. So I'm kid, I'm all confused. But I took my dad's advice and I trundled over to Mike's father's office and knocked on his door and I said, hey, I'm here, nine years old, teach me about money. He says, beat it, kid, you know. But that's where the story of Rich Dad, Poor Dad started. And finally, through persistence, my rich dad started teaching me about money on one condition. And that condition was he would never pay me. He says, the moment I pay you, you think like an employee. He says, that's the trap. Entrepreneurs work for free. And now I'm nine years old. My head's going cracking in half. He says, you never want a paycheck. You understand that, kid. I said, okay, I got it. And he says, well, how do I make money? He says, that's what entrepreneurs figure out. <laughs> it's like, it's the, it's the cat, you know, which just comes first, the cat or the, you know, the, the cat chasing its tail. And I said, so how do I learn about money? So he would just break out a Monopoly game board. So I would work for free. I'd pick up cigarette butts and get hotels and restaurants. And I would clean and do menial tasks. And as I got older, I started getting into office work and marketing and accounting. And I was an apprentice, basically, but I always worked for free. And he would teach me about money. But the way he taught me about money was playing Monopoly. And I finally, one day, I got upset. I said, well, when are you going to teach me about money? He says, what do you think we're doing? We're playing Monopoly. He goes, no, 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 no. What do you think we're doing? We're playing Monopoly. He says, what do you think we're doing? So I don't know. I'm teaching you about money. And then that's why, you know, you have one greenhouse. You know, he says, there's many formulas for great success in money. There's thousands of them. But one of the best ones is found on the game of Monopoly. Still is today. Four greenhouses, one red hotel. I said, what? He says, one of the greatest ways to acquire great wealth is playing Monopoly in real life. Four greenhouses, one red hotel. Went, is that all there is? He goes, that's it. And he says, what do you think I'm doing? And I went, I don't know. So then he took me out. He showed me his greenhouses. And 10 years later, when I was 19, I was now in school in New York. And I come back to Hawaii. And Rich Dad had bought the biggest piece of land smack dab in the middle of Waikiki Beach. And when you go to Waikiki Beach today, you'll see the Hyatt Regency Hotel. That was his hotel. Just like the game of Monopoly. Just like the game of Monopoly. Acquired assets and they became bigger assets. He just kept a, 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 it was called an assemblage because that property wasn't that big at the time. So he had to buy out all the small guys. 
Because Waikiki was a little dirt water, a little town. So he'd buy out this shop owner and buy that shop owner. And it took him a while, but he finally assembled this large piece of property. And then he then he and Hyatt put up this giant hotel. Hmm. You know, and, it I... just, and it just sold for $800 million. So that's how I learned about money. And that's because he refused, he refused to accept a paycheck. 